Hey guys, David here with Sheepdog Services. Uh, this morning, I'm headed out to another uh, leaf cleanup. This is a customer, I done it earlier, I guess probably, I had to guess, I think it was back in November maybe, maybe December, I'm, I'm not sure. It's not long ago, I've already cleaned up their property once and it's, they're wanting it done again. So, I'm gonna knock that out today. I gotta stop and get some fuel for the lawnmower and the, the two cycle oil and all that. But uh, today I'm really wanting to talk about why or more, more of uh, how I started my business, how I ended up getting the funds to get the equipment I got and, and the routes and all that I went, my, my insurance, my LLC stuff, and you know, just, just the general stuff of that nature. So uh, the reason why I started it originally uh, we when we bought our house the people that had it left a, a craftsman riding line mower a toro push mower and that's it which i mean i say that's it but i mean that, i was grateful for it because i we was moving from an apartment to a house and i didn't have any of that equipment so last summer i was it was you know grass was starting to grow and of course i was keeping the grass coat with that a riding mower i own two acres so pushing push mowing two acres and the south mississippi heat and humidity is just you know it's it's just not the it's not the way to go i mean if you if that's all you got then by all means but uh the riding mower started acting up and ended up breaking down on me tearing up and it was a it, i don't know how old the mower was but it was it, it had seen some better days so after talking with the wife, I looked up some different deals for zero turns and come across the Husqvarna uh, package that I bought, which was the MZT-52. It's their entry level commercial mower. Then I got their, their edger, the 520, whatever. I don't, I don't know the whole numbers and all that stuff. And then I got the 350 BT backpack mower. Knowing what I know now, of course I would have got the biggest backpack blower they had, but hindsight's 2020. So it's it's getting the job done, it's making me money, so that's really that's all that matters. And what I did to get the funds, I, I didn't have I think I paid and I got some hedge trimmers. I got hedge trimmers as well. Um that that all came into the package. So what uh what i did to get the funds for all that i didn't have 60 i think it was 6200 dollars and some change i didn't have all that just laying around so i had a i have a 2011 gmc pickup truck and i just refined it well I, before i refinanced it i looked at the uh the interest rates on the loans i could get uh, how much a month i'd be paying on the, the loans for that amount I think it was like a hundred and a hundred like maybe a hundred and fifteen hundred and twenty dollars for three years i think it was actually i think it was four years i don't i don't remember anyway i went ahead and refinanced the truck and i had enough equity in my truck that i was able to get the i was actually able to get a little bit more and whenever i i was able to get a little bit more you know we took care of some other stuff but that's 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 another story another day but uh anyway my truck payment only went up like 27 dollars a month so if, if you're if you're tracking you're thinking thinking about it you could either pay a hundred and plus dollars a month or 27 dollars a month so it kind of it was a no-brainer for me. I went ahead and refinanced the truck. It's a good truck. I'm gonna, you know, it's only right now it's got ninety-six thousand on it, and I hardly ever drive. I think last year, whenever I refinanced, I hit the trip meter because I started keeping up with my mileage. The only time, only time I ever really used it was for the business. So I think at the end of the month or at the end of the year, I was only I was less than three thousand miles. So of course I do this part time. But uh, I, the truck's got a lot of life in it. So I went ahead and went that route. I went and I picked out what I wanted. I got everything I wanted. I already had the trailer from a, a previous buy. So 
that wasn't an issue. So I had a, I got a six by 10 uh, top hat trailer. They're made uh, just north of here. And uh, actually a place where I grew up uh, in Ellisville, Mississippi. Um, but uh, e anyway, I had the trailer. I already had a uh, Echo, uh, the, two, the SMR 225 weed eater. So that wasn't an issue either. I already had the, the, the weed eaters. So now I have the, the riding mower or the zero turn, the weed eater, the edger, blower, hedge trimmers, and trailer. So it can only make sense to go ahead and try to make some money and you know pay all pay that extra $27 a month back. Or in reality, the, the 6200 plus whatever the interest is going to tack on, pay it all back. So I started looking into getting an LLC because I don't I don't trust people these days I say I guess you can say um everybody seems to be so happy and I work too hard for my stuff for somebody to be trying to take it away from me all right actually I'm pulling up to the gas station so we'll we'll continue this in just a minute all right I got to get some fuel for the two cycle and for the, the lawnmower all right y'all hang tight all right guys so we got the fuel got everything uh situation we're back on the road again so i think i was talking about the llc uh, the way i went about it here in the state of mississippi i mean you can go and get a lawyer and have them do it i think uh, i know someone had done it and they paid like 500 dollars to get everything done i went online simple i went down to goggle and uh looked up you know LLC, how to get an llc in mississippi and it popped up with the state department um, went on there I basically had to come up with a name then you have to search to see if that name's already taken if it's taken well I mean you just have to find another name or either don't get an LLC but uh, mine wasn't taken I decided Sheepdog Services was going to be my business name it, it describes who I am I've already talked about that in a, um, a later video uh, anyway I put it in it wasn't taken uh, there's a, a form on there. You have to fill out who you are, what your business is going to be for, uh, what kind of services you're going to provide, and uh, you got to do like the manage who's going to be the manager the, and stuff like that of the account. And then you have to you have to submit it. And I think it was fifty dollars. I think it was fifty dollars to do it. And then I think it was you know, probably two or three days later I got an email back saying that everything was accepted and congratulations you're now an LLC fantastic all right so I've done that I, um, I done I bought the equipment I got my LLC and I had no customers so in the meantime I started looking at insurances because once again people are so happy they like to uh, certain people are i say i say that certain people are and luckily I've, I've had nothing but really good customers no complaints out of anybody nobody's been hard to work with fantastic people all right but it's always that that what if that gets you but, so i started looking at insurances i went through I, I called got a quote from like geico progressive and all the regular big name people and man it was just astronomical how much they wanted for some insurance so I started googling again or goggling again and I found his Cox insurance and then I talked to a couple of people that, that had it and they've had no complaints and actually used it and filed a couple of uh, claims and they've had no, no complaints at all and I pay $39 a month for a million dollar policy so I, I i went forward yeah, no, it was no big it was it was no question i i was gonna go for that i think everybody else was a hundred and something plus and uh i mean it was, it was, it was a no-brainer so after i got the insurance i actually didn't buy the insurance yet i i, I found the quote and i held on to it for a little bit and then i hit facebook up I went to, uh, I started Google, or not Google, I went to Facebook and I looked up the, uh, the local HOAs and um, different 
neighborhoods, see if any of them had any kind of Facebook accounts. And, you know, quite a few of them did. And I started shooting out messages, not messages, but, you know, hitting them, asking if anybody needed anything. First off, a lot of them, you have to live in the neighborhood before you can get accepted. So I messaged the, uh, the admin of the page, told them who I was, what my, my end goal was, what I was wanting to do, what I was wanting to provide. And if it was okay, if I, if I posted it, some of them said it was fine. And, but there was some others like, no, we don't want any kind of advertisement. It's just for people living here, which I totally respect. I mean, that's, that's okay. So the ones that allowed it, I simply put up a few before and after pictures of me cutting my own lawn, of uh, the quality of work I did. And I sat back and I waited and it wasn't long until I started getting messages. Hey, how much for this? How much you charge for that? And then it was like, oh crap, I guess I got to figure this stuff out. I don't know how much to charge or what the going rates are. And so the first yard, I just went over and I looked at it. It wasn't bad. I think it was maybe a half acre lot with a fence and some edging that needed to be done. So I just guesstimated and threw out a number and they were like, yeah, that's, that's about $5 more than what I'm paying right now. But if you do a better job than the person that's been doing it, I'll go with you. So they gave me a shot and you know, I had that count all the way up until they sold the house and they moved to another state. And now the person that moved in is taking care of that lawn. But I had zero, they had zero complaints with me that they voiced to me. And if they had any complaints and they didn't, the lady that, that I'm talking about, she, she would not have any problem whatsoever telling me if there was a complaint. So I, I really believe there was no complaints. And then, um, I started hitting up all these other Facebook accounts and I, I got up to like, I believe 15 accounts. And you know, I, I hit people up that I knew at, at work at my full time, I do this part time. So uh, my full time job, I hit those people up and I'm pretty sure I've about aggravated the mess out of them with it. But you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do to get uh, get the business you want. Nobody, nobody got anything by sitting back and waiting for people to come to them. So. I got up to like 15 accounts or so, and then, you know, some things happened. Like I said, I think one person moved away. Uh, somebody else started renting their house out or the, the property I was taking care of out. And then, I don't know, I think, I know one gentleman passed away. Uh, some other life situations happened that other people wasn't able to continue paying for lawn service all right and that's basically how i got started so and now i'm in uh starting year two i guess and i'm doing pretty good i'm staying fairly fairly busy um i've got i went through a local print shop and i got some door hangers made up and I'm gonna send them out. I say send them out. I'm gonna go hit the neighborhoods that I'm wanting to target. I'm wanting everything to be closer to the house. Right now, everything is a little bit spread out, but it's not terrible. I'm still profitable, but you know, I want everything to be a little bit closer so that it will be even more profitable. But uh, I'm gonna go hit that up as soon as I get those those door hangers. And I've also looked at ins not Instagram, uh, Vista Print. Invest the print, you can get a hundred refrigerator magnets. You know what? I'm not even gonna quote the price because I don't want to lie to y'all. But it, it wasn't terrible at all. Like, yeah, I'm gonna get them. So and then we'll send those out as well. All right, we just pulled up at the, the customer's yard. We're gonna get out and clean these leaves up. And I I tell you what, today I'll just show y'all a before and after. I don't think y'all need to see a whole nother cleanup that ain't y'all seen plenty of them from y'all know how to do it i blew all the leaves into a pile mulch them up and or either put them on the tarp and pull them out all right so let's get uh i'm gonna get out and i'll show you what i got okay all that it right. first i'm gonna show y'all the backyard first all right there's a fairly amount of good leaves in here i'm gonna just blow everything out like i normally do and just mulch it up and put what's left in a on the tarp and take it to the truck and get rid of it all right there you go what backyard all the leaves there's a fairly good amount in here always get it off the back porch just make sure the grass and everything is 
good and solid for the lawnmower. It don't make any roots. And there's a bunch of stumps right over here that I found last time. A bunch of cypher stumps. Yeah, there they are. Just got to be careful of these not to hit them. Normally where there's cypher stumps, the ground's pretty wet. And that's exactly what's going on. You can probably hear it with me walking. So, yeah. I had to blow everything away from here. We're gonna get all these leaves here. And I guess the fence, well, not guess, the fence line right there is the, the property line. And then here's the front yard. Everything seems to be pretty decently dry up here. And there's my beautiful truck and trailer. All right, let's get to work. All right, boys. Here's the backyard. Everything's all cleaned up. Just got the gate here if so I didn't lock myself in. No, it sure didn't. Here's the side of the house. Shut this gate back real quick. There's the front. Some of the flower beds. There's a few still in there, but can't get everything. And again, there's my beautiful truck. Alright, I'll talk to you in a minute. Alright guys, now that I'm done with that, uh, back to our original discussion. Which I, to be honest with y'all, can't even remember where I was at at. Oh, I know I got the insurance. I went through his cocks. I got the million dollar insurance, or million dollar policy for I think it's thirty nine dollars a month. It's four hundred and like four hundred and ninety dollars a year. And let me tell you, insurance is very important. I uh, I actually busted the window to a brand new Ford Edge while cutting grass. I mean, it's going to happen no matter who you are, no matter how long you've been doing this. You're going to eventually either you you broke one or you're going to. And um, after I got it replaced and everything, uh, we went through company that just comes out and services there at the house it was uh 800 and let's just say 50 i think i, I think it was it was above that 800 and, i can't remember exactly the number but it was over 800 bucks over 850 i know so i got you get your money's worth if you ever have to file a claim so that's that's that should be motivation enough right there to to make sure you get insurance. I don't know if y'all can see, I got a truck bed full of leaves and some of them blowing out. Another car behind me is probably not too happy. I don't have one of those little nets to put over it, but I think a lot of them get trapped by that uh, by the gate of the fence. Anyway, uh, guys, if y'all want to start a business, it's not hard. You just got to have a few things. You got to have the will to get up and go out and do it got to be able to do a good job and if you can't do one of those two things then you're not going to be successful and integrity integrity is a, a huge thing if you don't have integrity you really don't have anything like on this this job that i just got through with i busted a uh, little small plant pot it was completely empty it was sitting on top of a outside coffee table i was blowing everything off and a gust of wind from the blower blew it off and it busted i could have easily picked it up put it in the back of the truck and pretend like it never happened or either left it there because it's been windy and just told them hey i think the wind blew it over whatever but then that puts my integrity in check and question and that's something i refuse to ever have have happen if uh I tell you something happened you can take it to the bank it happened that way uh, it doesn't matter how much trouble it might get me into or how bad it may make me look one thing you'll never be able to say about me is that i lied about something so do a good job have the will to get up and get off your butt and go out there and, and work for what you want and have integrity make sure you got your business all lined up just right what you don't necessarily have to have an LLC. It just protects your uh, all your personal stuff in case somebody ever do decides to, to sue you for something. Make sure you got insurance, a good insurance company too. 
that whenever you file a claim, they're not going to fight you on it. All right. Uh, that's, that's pretty much it, guys. If you got any questions, put it in the comments below, and I'll be more than happy to get back with you on it. All right. Y'all take care.